Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm Benjamin Hunt and um, I'm studying an MA in Artist, Film, Video and Photography and I'm a, tra uh, a sessional tutor at uh, University of Creative Arts in Canterbury. Um, I was awarded an Interreg Recreate Scholarship to make work about coastal towns that are kind of on this idea of regeneration, which is, is quite a problematic uh, word at the moment. Um, I'm, I've just created a critical research paper for, for my MA. Um, it is complete, but I wanted this to be a kind of testing ground and a kind of sounding board for, for some ideas that I have. Um, I hope to kind of I was hoping to kind of learn contemporary issues to do with archaeology and archaeological process and relationships to visualization this week. Um, and I'm kind of specifically interested in the intersections of politics and aesthetics, representation and reality, and then truth and illusion. They seem to be quite recurring themes. Um, I'm at the beginning of my career in practice, so I'm, I'm creating a kind of critical diagnostic of the areas that I, that I want to explore, kind of the crux of mechanics of my work. Um, my work is polemical, so it, as, in, as seems to be happening a lot in tag in the past couple of days, it's uh, more questions seem to be asked than, than being answered. Um, but for me, that's, that's my role as an artist, to problematise things. Um, and hopefully, that as, as I kind of leave looking more into the world of archaeology, into the art, into the art, uh, the art in, uh, world, hopefully one might do vice versa. Um, I'm just going to read a few quotes that kind of uh, always kind of propel me to kind of work in between different practices to do with anthropology, archaeology and the arts. Any future art anthropology collaborations will have to deal with certain parameters coming from different disciplinary backgrounds and certain eruptive fault lines, chromophobia, iconophobia, sensory research, ethics, experimentation and incompleteness. And what kind of work is involved in the co-emergence of interpretation and reality and what role do materials play in the process? My practice fuses experimental lens-based pre lens -based image making with visual anthropology and archaeological processes. Issues surrounding medium specificity, commonly found in avant-garde work, and debates between research and research, often associated with anthropology and archaeology, are tied together. I make work that responds to coastal architectural spaces that are commonly associated with transience or liminality, a problematic dislocation between the material form and the consciousness given identity bestowed upon it. Okay, there are various stages within my project when I work through a space that culminates to its realised outcome. So the space is often encountered in person, it's then researched. A combination of the encounter and research, the primary and secondary research is collected and converted into a diagrammatic or orchestrated form, which I think uh, is the interesting linkage between embodied research of the space and the final outcome of the work. The work is then created in relation to the preschool, and then the work is then curated back in the location where it was first manifested. There are inevitably philosophical, aesthetic, ethical, socio-political issues and problems that exist when working through this process. These issues are brought to the forefront of the project and become actively embedded in the work. Okay. This method within my practice leads to images that document the existence of a space, but also points to the process of its manifestation as an image. The pre-scores that are created map out the process which leads to the image's form. The idea is that the process of construction highlights a specificity about the space. So this is a project that I've been working on called on Margate Sands in relationship, in relationship to a project at the Turner Contemporary Gallery in Margate. Um, and people were interpreting the T.S. Eliot poem, The Wasteland, various different um, interpretations. So I actually decided to interpret the, the line incredibly literally and just in, uh, research what sand is. And that one of the main components of sand was silicon dioxide. I then researched silicon dioxide and found the atomic bond structure of uh, silicon dioxide and turned that into some kind of editing process, the position of the camera within the space um, and the, the, the different temporalities within the image, which I'll show in a second. And it was then reintroduced back into Margate in an um, experimental film screening uh, a few months later. It's not going to sound this one, it's okay, it's silent. As my images function as a stencil of a space and as a process of creating form and shape from the initial mapping of the space, 
then issues surrounding the indexicality, iconicity, trace, diectic, the act of pointing, relativity and arbitrariness, object subjects become issues to work through. The debates surrounding object and subject and relatively arbitrariness are again challenged when considering the role of reflexivity. The dichotomy between material and consciousness is constantly challenged as my practice manifests images and, and function as material constructs and as epistemic signifiers of liminal spaces. Reflexivity is encouraged to actively challenge the cause and effect of these hierarchies and vision outcomes. What are the repercussions when these issues outlined are shifted between art, anthropology and archaeology? As I respond to coastal spaces and map them using archaeological and anthropolo anthropological methods, which are then visually constructed, what are the roles between these industries in my practice? <laughs> what, what are the hierarchies? How are the future processes implicated? And what is the, the, the exact nature of my practice? Okay, okay so the, one of the first things I'm working for me is the idea of indexicality. The photographic image is indexical, it seems irrefutable. What is up for debate is the ontology of the indexicality that is aligned with the photographic process. An issue that has arisen within my practice is the relationship between the indexical and the iconographic. As an image may function as a document of a space and as a record of its own construction, there will inevitably exist a slippage between the role of the index and the icon and its subsequent relativ relativity arbitrariness. The index in its most reductive sense is a causal trace of an object's existence. The trace must have some physical and or existential connection to the referred object. An index in a photographic context is a, is a sign that denotes the existence of an object via the photographic tracing of light that transforms the three-dimensional object into an image of a two-dimensional plane. What complicates this definition of the index called photographic image is the leakage of iconographic residue and the hierarchies of consciousness often become entangled in the practice of semiotics. So I've been doing some research about the Sherwin Trout as one of the first photographic images that um, complicated theological interpretation with the material, materiality of the formation of the image itself. Okay. I've lost myself a bit. <laughs> okay. A direct contiguous sign is one that has an immediate relation to a physical change in the environment. For example, the appearance of smoke or a shadow. It is stated that habitual animals only function on the plane of direct communicative signs. For example, the immediate vision of a predator or food source. An, in, an indirect sign is one that is temporally separate from its origin, commonly associated with the icon or symbol. Displaced signs do not have to be immediately mediated or acted upon. Therefore, hierarchies of mediation can be formed. Okay, so... This is a, the kind of outline of how a semiotic process of making images would work, um, and I kind of problematise this. This is a project that I created last summer, um, commissioned by the um, Whitstable Oyster Festival, um, and I was told to kind of research the history of um, the Whitstable Oyster Festival and, and its landscape, um, and it kept on becoming apparent that the oyster was dominating the history of the space, and yet you can still find traces of these oyster shells around the landscape and that the shop itself um, was that kind of pinky colour. Um, so I was interested in how I would create the idea of the perfect image. So I was dropping the oyster and trying to see how many attempts it would take to drop the oyster in front of the camera to capture it. Capture it uh, kind of, um, this idea of um, the decisive moment. Um, so the title is Oyster Drop 4. So it kind of points to the idea that there's an element of construction within the image. Um, but it also has some kind of um, social value towards the space, something that I'm interested in. So this is something that I've been trying out about where my work actually fits in relation to visual communication. So obviously I've kind of adapted the idea of semiotics, it's something that I'm not too sure about in relation to my work. And the idea is that you would look at an object and then you would interpret the, represent, the representing and then it would lead to a further interpretation. That's how they, it's like a spider's web. But my work kind of asks, well, if an object and its representation is the same, then how does one, take, how does one interpret that further? And is it, okay for is it okay for a piece of work to represent anything? Can it just be an embodied response to the space? But my work kind of challenges that 
in the fact that it can do both. So what happens if there is no distinction between a signifier and signified? If a work directly indexes the existence of space, what is the difference between the object and its representative? Where does the interpretive process take place? Is it the tension between the form of expression and the form of content due to their familiarity or their epistemic value? Is the interpretation the interaction that there lacks an interpretation? Could the abstract mapping of the space, embodied as a form of content, lead to a process of encountering the interpretant? The various procedures as to how the interpretant or linkages between signified is where this dialectical tension festers. A semiotic, semiological approach to identifying the index and its relationship to science has been demonstrated. As my practice problematises the ontology of an index, is semiology, semiotics, the best approach for analysis? How can perception and embodiment be critically analysed and spectated? Okay. The procedure of creating diagrams to strategize the form of a work is a prominent process within, with my practice current, at, this, at this current period of time. Okay. Experimental filmmakers such as Kurt Kren, Rose Lauder, and Tony Conrad utilize pre score diagrams. What happens to indexical relativity if the audience is aware of a pre-score that drives the structure of the work? The role of indexical trace, dialectic, order and form of content appears similar. If work is created that involves constructed pre-score diagrams deriving from various mapping processes, then the rel rel relativity of form of expression and arbitrariness of form of content, the fixity and fluidity of the work is contested. The two may, the two may act out as a dichotomy or as a union. Self-reflexivity is required to work through this process. So I've been, I was researching, I was doing a project with some students at the Beanie House of Art and Knowledge in Canterbury, and I deconstructed, um, just basically the colours of the, the Canterbury, um, I can't remember what you call it now, the badge, the, the crest of arms, and was looking for objects within inside the gallery space with similar colour schemes. And I um, did a bit of research about Canterbury Cathedral and looked at some bell ringing songs that would have been played at the time when the Beanie House of Notch was first created, which is this plain bob triples. And then I kind of tried to organise the images in relation to the score. Um, and what my practice tries to challenge is, is it important that the audience is aware of the mapping processes that are involved in the work? So what happens to the, the way that it's interpreted when that score, that plan, is actively embedded in the work? My argument, discussion, debate is that there are two reflexive modes of image practice here present. A self-conscious awareness of the mental image as a subject that stems from objective indexical images and the material image as an object that is encountered by consciousness. The two are a dichotomy. However, I would argue that they position the spectator in a similar role and therefore share common ground. It is also an opportunity to highlight the misunderstandings between the ontology of an image, an image and its epistemological usage as this can contribute to the debate between indexical trace, the act of pointing, and the Marxist Hegelian dialectic. So I'm interested in this idea of self-reflexivity, self that me as the maker and the audience can actually have some kind of direct causal effect with the work, that it places, it places a kind of immediate um, kind of job or an act of labour for the spectator as well as me as the maker. Okay, I always through the don't need to show. So I'm interested in a, in a film called Michelangelo and Tony Oli because he, the way he um, composes images, he always creates this idea of distancing. He never allows the audience to get too close to the subject matter. Um, and so he, a narrative still drives the work, but it's the idea that as you gradually watch the film, you start to realise that these are just tracings of events and that the narrative itself is kind of hollowed out and they're kind of empty signifiers, which is something that, that I'm interested in. So I w I'd advise to watch Antonio Ogi films. How do you go back on this? Okay. Um, and then the other, the other side of the scale, so I think about the, the piece of work as being material first and then it's consciousness, is a radical form of filmmaking that started in the 1960s called materialist film, started in, in London in the 1960s. Uh, basically, it was this idea that 
you would uh, one would watch the film and try and work out the kind of the material nature of how the film is constructed, and then try to remove any kind of ideological, epistemic values. <laughs> it's a very radical piece of filmmaking, um, but I'm interested how a materialist film practice that is somehow related to some kind of research about a space can still somehow signify a specific specificity about a space. I don't know if some of you have noticed there's a, there's a plane that kind of goes across. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is a this is a, an artist book. I hate saying the phrase. It's just it's a book. It's not an artist book. <laughs> um, that I'm making at the moment called uh, Temperature Temper Temperament Tidal Pool. Um, basically, I swam through a tidal pool near where I live in Broadstairs, so my flat was just opposite, so I could run back very quickly. It was lucky, um, and I documented my body temperature swimming through the tidal pool in December. Was it December? <laughs> no, no, November. Um, to see the the changes to my body temperature. Um, unfortunately, the camera was too far away to pick up my body temperature. Um, my sister, who's studying biology, said that if I did turn blue on there, I'd be dead. So, um, <laughs> being a typical artist, I had to kind of take poetic license and, and, and kind of think about that um, and problematise the idea of data and how one would interpret it. Um, so, instead, what I did was I categorised my experience of how I, uh, how I experienced the, the, um, the, the temperature as opposed to seeing it on, on screen. So, it went from normal temperature, cold, really fucking cold. Um, warm, getting better, and then I'm going to run back to the flat. Um, and then I turned it, and I'm currently in the process of turning it into a book. And what I've managed to, what I've been doing is I've been deconstructing kinetic energy into the idea of different vibrations. So when an object is hot, it would uh, the vibrations of the uh, of the material would um, it would conflict. It would conflict. Whereas if something was colder, um, it wouldn't have this kind of area of confliction. And so I was working this idea of body temperature, colour temperature, the way it would reflect, uh, reflect the pagination of, of the work. And then when I show the work, the idea is that the work is actually not bound and that it forces the audience to work through the book. So they either see it as a narrative of me walking through the tidal pool or they can attempt to construct it trying to work out the kind of diagrammatic process that's influenced my work. So again, this idea of now you've seen the work, the diagrams make more sense. So I'm kind of interested in, in the relationships between how one embodies the work or how they experience it in terms of signification. So even though I've very briefly just shown you two kind of opposing forms of filmmaking, the idea is that I always believe that one cap that the, the, the approach is to still place the spectator as part of the maker of, of the work. Um, so you'd, you'd approach the work either from thinking about material and then approaching consciousness or vice versa. Um, and my work tries to work in the middle, so in between avant-garde <coughs> filmmaking and documentary filmmaking. Um, and I've kind of finally realised that it's okay to be in the middle. Go through periods of enlightenment, kind of depression, <laughs> not knowing where I fit, kind of these existential kind of things. Sounds very poetic, doesn't it? Um, and now that it's okay to work in between the two. So that was a diagram for a piece of work that I've just created for a commission for a brewery called Romney. Um, and I just approached them and said I'd like to do a video piece for them. Because um, they often uh, get, they often collaborate with local artists in the Romney Marsh. And I just thought, oh yeah, I'd really like to, to deconstruct the beer making process. So that diagram you just saw a minute ago was the, was the different diagrams. And I deconstructed the beer making process into these different forms. Um, and then that bottle would be a QR code, so when someone's having a pint, they could. It's this idea that I like the idea of using QR codes because it's the idea that one space can be many different places, like a heterotopian space, that they might exist, but not physically. Um, so this is the, the video that I made. Is there sound? 
Lookers five. Originally made to sustain the lookers while they were out on the march for days and weeks. Ingredients. 500 milliliter lamb stock. One half a glass of red wine, 225 g onions. One tablespoon chopped mint, 285 g crust pastry. Five salt and pepper to season one meat and egg to glaze rush down with a bottle of rum. Rami March Visitor Center. There are gentle walks and picnic areas around the grounds and gardens with a boardwalk over the seasonal pond to the reconstructed Lookers Hut and views across the Rami Marsh. So this research that I've shown has used visual art examples when outlining theoretical undercurrents and practical elements of my work. This is primarily because I'm trained as an arts practitioner, but I started off working as an image maker looking into the world of archaeology, anthropology and other humanities, and my aim is to boil down these issues that cross-disseminate the idea of indexicality, reflexivity, um, object, subject, um, so that my work kind of span both. Um, this is a project that I'm working on, but my main MA project that I'm working on is, is, is Doggerland. Um, it's a space that I'm researching, and the idea is that I will hopefully, if I get the funding, travel around. I'd like to travel around, not actually into the space, into the, the, the seascape, but just around the different coasts of Europe and try and locate different uh, research strategies and produce that into a body of work and show it in, a, uh, in an art um, festival called the Folks and Triangle. And the idea is that I'll be curating the work in different spaces, such as libraries for, for an artist's book. Uh, I would like to make a short film and show it in the cinema before um, the main film starts. So the idea is hopefully that people will have this kind of map that they work through, and they themselves will be a kind of archaeologist of their space, but working in the present as opposed to the past. Okay.